These are E. coli bacteria. You've got millions of these cells living inside your intestines. And just as you can respond to the environment and conserve resources, these bacteria can respond and conserve resources as well. And we're going to take a look at how they do that in this video on prokaryotic gene regulation. Let's start by reviewing the genome of prokaryotic cells. Here we have a bacterial cell. Most of the bacteria's genes are found on one circular chromosome. However, bacteria also have smaller loops of DNA known as plasmids. And on both the chromosome and the plasmids, the genes are organized into little clusters called operons. Operons are groups of similar genes that can be turned on or off depending on the environment. So here's an operon, a cluster of genes. Here's another operon. And even on the plasmid, we can find operons. Let's take a look at the structure of an operon. So here we have a strand of DNA. Uh, the first part of the operon is the promoter. This is a DNA sequence that RNA polymerase will bind to in order to start transcription. And it's located upstream of the genes that will be transcribed. Upstream is just the biologist's way of saying in front of. Next to the promoter is the operator. The operator is a DNA sequence that a regulatory protein will bind to. It's also upstream of the genes. And the operator basically acts as an on-off switch for these genes. The genes themselves are DNA sequences that code for proteins that have important structural or functional roles in the bacterium. And then finally, the regulatory gene is not technically part of the operon, but it codes for the regulatory protein, which binds to the operator of the operon. Now to understand how this all works, let's take a look at a specific example, lactose digestion. So lactose is a disaccharide, a double sugar. And if bacteria can break it down into simple sugars or monosaccharides, then they can use those simple sugars to produce ATP during glycolysis and get lots of energy. However, in order to break down this disaccharide, an enzyme is necessary. So once again, lactose is the disaccharide, the double sugar. And those simple sugars that it can be broken down into, glucose and galactose, are used to make ATP. Lactase is the enzyme that can help digest lactose. And here we can see the lactase bind to the substrate, catalyze a reaction, and then release the products, the two sugars. Now let's see how the operon controls that process. In bacteria, the LAC operon controls the transcription and translation of lactase genes, and the operon is usually off. That's the default setting. So here's what the LAC operon looks like. We have the lactase genes, three different genes that code for lactase, and then we've got the promoter upstream, the operator upstream, and then somewhere far away, even though it's shown close by in this diagram, is the regulatory gene. Now, that regulatory gene is always on. It's always being transcribed into mRNA and translated into the regulatory protein. And that regulatory protein acts as a repressor. When it is active, it binds to the operator, and it prevents RNA polymerase from binding to the promoter. If RNA polymerase can't bind to the promoter, these genes cannot be transcribed or translated. And you know what? That's fine because right now there is no lactose in the bacteria's environment, so there's no need for it to be transcribing genes for lactase to break down non-existent lactose. However, let's say that you just ate a big bowl of ice cream and now there is lactose all over your digestive system. Your bac bacteria are surrounded by it. Well now, some lactase enzymes would be kind of useful. So here's what happens. Same old operon, here's the lactase genes, here's the operator, there's the promoter, here's the regulatory gene. It's being transcribed into RNA and translated into a regulatory protein. However, the lactose in the environment binds to that regulatory protein and changes its shape. So it is now an inactive repressor. It can no longer bind to the operator, which is good news for RNA polymerase, which can now bind to the promoter, 
and start transcribing the lactase genes. And here's the lactase mRNA, and here it's been translated into lactase enzymes. And so these lactase enzymes will go and break down lactose, and the bacteria will now have energy. Now here's the really cool thing, though. After these enzymes have broken down all the lactose, the operon gets turned off again. And here's why. Without lactose in the environment, there's nothing to bind the repressor, so the repressor becomes active again and binds the operator. RNA polymerase is blocked from the promoter, and transcription and translation of lactase genes stops. And this is a great way to maintain homeostasis because if the lactose is all gone, why waste time and energy transcribing and translating lactase enzymes? So here's a summary of that. <clears throat> now let's zoom out a little bit. Um, there are many different operons in a bacterial cell. The lac operon is only one of them. And we can categorize the operons based on how they turn on and off genes. Um, some operons negatively regulate. And here is one type, an inducible operon. An inducible operon is like the lac operon. It's usually off. The repressor is usually active and bound to the operator. However, if there's a change in the environment, the repressor can become inactive and the operon can be turned on. So an inducible operon can be induced on. The opposite is a repressible operon. A repressible operon is normally on because the repressor is normally inactive. However, if there's a change in the environment, the repressor might become active and turn the operon on. There's one more type and this is positive regulation by operons. And in this case, we're not using a repressor protein. Here's our operon. In this case, the regulatory protein is an activator. And when that activator binds to the promoter region, it helps RNA polymerase transcribe and translate genes. And so that is a close look at how prokaryotic cells like bacteria regulate their genes in order to respond to the environment and conserve resources.